Welcome to Chalk Valley History, yeah. Thank you. History Festival. Thank it's you. lovely to have you here. It's great to be um, here. What are your first impressions of the festival so far this year? <laughs> you just arrived. I've just arrived. <laughs> I've just arrived on the train, but it all looks very, very wonderfully familiar and it's brilliant to be here. It's my favourite festival. Uh, you know, I write about history, so what's not to like about the History Festival? So can you tell us a bit more about yourself and what you've come here to talk about? Uh, so I have come to talk about my latest book, which is called Brave Hearted, the dramatic story of the women of the American West. So it's a, 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 a story about the, what we know as the, you know, what you would call, what Hollywood would call the Wild West. And my, my version of it is looking at the stories of the incredible women who took part in these migrations across America in the mid 19th century. Uh, and I look at not just the white women who went, um, but I look at the Native American, the impact on Native American women and the African American women who went often as enslaved people. Chinese women who also went as enslaved people and I tell their stories and um, it was a very it was a very special book for me actually they're very absorbing they're very absorbing very often very extreme stories and it was wonderful to have yeah, a chance a to write them down. subject yeah. area like getting voices to be heard that might not have been heard exactly before. and my my whole uh, you know the whole sort of thrust of my writing life has been trying to rescue women's stories from oblivion because often it's just the men who uh, whose stories get told and so that's what I've been trying to do for many many years now yeah. and this is the latest in that series um, actually on that topic mm -hmm. so like I think you wrote in your book that legacies of great Native Americans have mm -hmm. their place in history mm -hmm. uh, but the accounts and the experiences of women are hard to come by yes um, so what inspired you to like dig deep and get that information and how did you find it uh, it, uh, it it's very hard to find sources by Native American yeah, women absolutely. you know they're, they're their traditions are oral traditions, the way that they record their history and mm. what happened to them. And so the, that's very, it's very easy for those things to get lost. Uh, but sometimes they are written down and I w was able to find sources. There are not as many Native American sources as mm. there are white sources. There are lots and lots of white sources. But I did manage to find maybe half a dozen or so of them. And the ones that I found are of very, very good, uh, very good quality. Okay, uh, so, so yes, I was very proud to be able to put those in. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, in your book, you describe these accounts of the women mm -hmm. as having a freshness and a drama about their version of events that are mm -hmm. undimmed by time. Mm -hmm. Why do you think the records from females are so different to the records from males in They're that way? They're very, very different. And in, in, um, women tend to write about very ordinary details and uh, men tend to write much more about the sort of big the big things that happen mm. so the the treaties and the wars and the battles and so forth and um, which of course are very interesting but if you are wanting to know what life was really like for people you know most people were not involved in mm. wars were certainly not involved in the in the in the treaty making yeah. you know most people were just going about their regular life you know trying to feed their children and trying to you know keep going and so women were mu a much better at writing down those sorts of details and and weirdly the things that made them made people think that they weren't important because oh they're just writing about you know their, what they what they cook their husband for breakfast are actually the things that today are really really fascinating to read because they're they it's you know it's so it's, it's the detail yeah. it's the detail and they're very good at that um Having migrated to the West, uh, many women faced challenges and setbacks that they mm. were expected to endure whilst living up to the ideals of American womanhood. What happened to these women who didn't find the prosperity that they were looking for? Well, there's no doubt about it that it, life was very, very hard. Uh, and life was hard for everybody. And sometimes they turned back and they went back to the East again. There's a rather amazing expression which is called seeing the elephant and on on the route on these and the incredible migratory journeys that they did there might come a time when they saw the elephant and that means that they suddenly became aware of just 
what it was that yeah. they'd taken on and they completely freaked out and turned around and went back. And there are no numbers for those people. You know, we know roughly the numbers of people who, who ended up in the West, but we don't know the numbers of people who turned around and, and just scuttled, scuttled <laughs> back home. <laughs> um, and, you know, life was hard and a lot of them died. Mm. And uh, on these first journeys, a lot of them starved to death because they didn't know what to take with them. Mm. And women had a kind of double jeopardy because they were the ones having babies. And of course, having a baby was very dangerous at the best of times, but if you were in a wagon, you know, 2,000 miles away from home with no other women companions or no mm. doctor, it was even more dangerous for you. So it was tough. Yeah, sounds it. Uh, before the rain gets worse, this is my final question. <laughs> so this um, is nothing compared to what these women had to endure. Yeah. So we must <laughs> stick it out. <laughs> um, so you finished focusing on this subject area. Mm -hmm. Like, What's next for you in your career? I am currently look, looking to try to find another, I, I sort of specialise in groups of women, as I was saying before, mm. whose stories have been ignored or brushed under the carpet or no one thought they were important enough. And I'm looking at to find another group. And at the moment I'm sort of, in, I've found some rather interesting Quaker women who traveled a lot. Mm. And uh, the one particular one who ended up at the court of the Ottoman Sultan. To, you know, to try to tell the Ottoman Sultan he needed to convert to Christianity, which is completely mad. Uh, and I quite like the idea of these mad women who, women traveled much more than we think they did. And I'm quite interested in that because how, <laughs> why, you know, what, what happened? What, what, you know, what, what, what happened? What happened to them? Why did they, why did they do it? I, I, I'm very intrigued by that uh, that kind of thing, and yeah. and if you find any women who are doing anything remotely unusual like that, I try to grab hold of it. So that's what I'm looking at at the yeah. moment. I hope I will find enough material because that's the difficulty is to mm. find. You know, often they yeah. if they did write something down, it hasn't necessarily been preserved. So how do you you know you, yeah. you don't have any anything much to go on? But that's what I'm working on. That sounds absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much for answering my questions and I look forward to seeing your talk later. Great. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. <laughs>